today we're doing something a little bit different. Um, let me just go ahead and turn my monitor. There we go. So for the past couple of indie horror game videos that we've been doing here on the channel where I've been giving feedback and that type of thing, I have been recording on PC. I'm totally not doing this video because I just received a Elgato game capture from my wife because she got a new one. So this is totally not an excuse to try mine out. <laughs> But I figured for this video here, we're going to try and take a look at some indie games that has been released to Switch instead of the PC. And that is kind of interesting because it does take some, uh, you know, fiddling with the performance of your games if you want it to fit into a Switch because the Switch does not have the same performance as my PC does. Uh, so when you make a game to Switch, you have to make sure that the Switch can actually handle the game. And I found a couple of different genres uh, within horror that you know, just to sort of like look at them and see how they're set up, how the controls work, to see how the performance aspect of it has been like patched in or whatever they've done to to make it actually be able to work on the Switch. Uh, so it'll be fun to see if we see a bunch of pop-ins and that type of thing, uh, especially in these two here that I found because they, um, they seem like they need some retouch in order to work on the Switch. So it, it's going to be fun to see. I do also want to mention before we get into any of these games that these are full releases. They're not demos, they're not game jams, they're not fun little projects. So if there's anything wrong with these games, it is in a full released state right now. So that is going to be fun to see if we can bug it out or find anything, you know, try to glitch out the games maybe a little bit, that will be fun. Um, so yeah, let's try and dive into one of these. The first one here is called Welcome Welcome to Henwell, and obviously we're not going to play the full games because I'm not planning on sitting here for, I don't know, it might be 20 hours or something if we had to complete them. We're just going to dive into them and see what they're all about and, you know, try and give some feedback on the state of a fully released game this time around. So, we have Welcome to Henwell. Why do I have... Barely any, okay, it does register audio, so there's audio here. So there's, I think, just a little bit of ambience in the background. It seems like we have a dead person there. Is it inspired by Silent Hill? Because it does have some Silent Hill aspects to it. The menu, I can already tell, is... To be honest, I don't know if that is just because the menu is low res, or if it's that's a style. It is kind of pixelated in the corners. Um, so it does say continue. I have never played this game before. Uh, if I say continue, is it just going to start me over? Yeah, I can't click it. Okay, so just to prove it to you. Really curious to... Why I'm not... Oh, wait, whoa, I, I muted it. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> There's audio now. <laughs> I don't know if you guys had audio. I didn't have audio. Um, it's unmuted. Yeah, you can definitely tell. Like, look, if you look at the textures, there is a LOD, I mentioned that in a previous video, which is a level of detail. So based on how far you are from a... Okay, let's turn that down a little bit. Er, that is way too loud. There we go. Let's do that. Um, yeah, so there's something called LOD, which means level of detail. This is way different than on a uh, PC when you do first person stuff. Wow, okay. Takes some getting used to. Uh, so basically, I think that in order to get the switch working with the game, I think they just lowered the, the level of detail. Like, you, you know, when you walk a certain distance away from this wall here, for example, in a regular game, when you get up close to it, it's going to be like high res. Then the further you walk back, they actually lower the resolution. So like to the point where you, you can't really see the difference because you're so far away. Oh, yeah, you can actually see it here. Oh. Good example of it. So right here, look at the resolution. I'm, I'm pointing at the screen, but you can't see it. Uh, there's that smudge in the wall on the left of the thing we just came out of. I walk back. Whoop, they're changed. And whoop, they're changed back to high res. And whoop, go back to low res. <laughs> so it does happen here. Um, but what I'm noticing is that it's probably not starting out at the highest res. It's probably like toned down just like one level. And then when we walk over here, they actually lowered it so much that instead of like it activating once we get all the way over like here, it's already activating when we just get like a third the distance away from it. So, you know, in order to get this working on Switch, they definitely um, 
had to do some things. <laughs> um, interesting to see. I mean, it's a switch. The, the screen is this small when you sit there and you play it in front of you. Uh, so unless you have it hooked up to a TV, this is not something that you're really going to see. So, you know... Just something to to point out. I'm not really picking on the on the low res of this game. Oh, there's a key there. I'm not really picking on it being low res, even though it may sound like it. I'm just pointing out, as a game dev, what I'm seeing. I used a combination of anabolic steroids and insulin to initiate the subject. He exhibited an intense reaction to the drugs. Rapid muscle growth was observed, but a hormone imbalance has developed causing extreme, uncontrollable rage. A substantial dose of clozapine seems to keep him under control. Is that it? Okay. I have no idea what this game is about, by the way. Did I mention that? I don't even remember the name of the game. <laughs> I can check it really fast. It's called Welcome to Hanwell. Okay. <laughs> uh, I love that you can just exit out and the game is still running in the background. That's cool. Um, yeah, I have absolutely no idea what this game is about, and if I have to be completely honest, I don't really care <laughs> what the game is about. I just saw it, it was like 10 kroner, actually 7.5 on sale, because there's like a huge sale going on right now in the, uh, um, oh, that's the run button. There's a huge sale in the Switch store right now. Oh, look, oh, wait, 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 there's some culling going on. <gasps> okay, so when we talked about level of detail, right? Um, the further step back you can get from level of detail, you know, when you get all the way down to the lowest possible quality, the next step is something called culled, which means that you load objects out of the game when they get a certain distance away from you. So you notice the, the, the little, um, uh, <laughs> what do you call that? Uh, the fence on the floor. It's not called a fence on the floor, but you see how it's getting loaded in and out? You can actually see the tiny circle of the character to where objects are getting loaded out, like called out. That's interesting. In this case, it might just be the crate. Not crate. What is it called? This stuff. <laughs> um... Because different objects in the game, you can you can call them differently. So, you know, while one of them may load out already in that tiny circle, another one might get loaded out much further ahead. So, that's interesting. I wonder how lighting works. I'm actually not too sure about that. Hold R to sprint? Oh. I was about to say, do I even have an R on my uh, controllers? But I do. <laughs> I thought it was called LR or something. Uh, crouch, press the right. Oh, we have a body. Oh, map is not available. I click down. Oh, okay. Press the right bumper. Is that a uh, t another tape recording? Can I? Uh, okay, wait. Oh, she got killed. Uh, by the way, there's directional sound, and it even like decreases and increases depending on if I'm crouching or not. That is important. That's actually one of the biggest things that people they neglect when it comes to indie horror games or just any indie game, uh, which is the fact that audio is super important in indie games, in any kind of game, <laughs> not just indie games. Because uh, if you don't have good audio, and it doesn't just have to be good audio quality, but also if directional audio is way off and it just plays into your headset, it's one of the worst experiences ever, so. Research notes of 10 2021 The jail rejected my requests for another inmate, citing morality as a reason. The mayor has taken the same stance. They told me the only people they are currently holding haven't had a trial that I might as well just snatch someone from the streets. Are you seeing this? The table is uh, has been placed into the pillar. So that right there is something that I usually see happening in game jam games or people who are copying other like PT copies, for example. Um, 
you know, where they don't really put that much care into what they're doing in their games. There was a person who asked me on one of my uh, previous look behind you while running. Oh, you can zoom in. Wait, how does that? Oh, okay. Okay, it's a zoom button. I'm guessing something is going to be chasing me. I was about to say. Um, yeah, one person asked me about like why people like with the table, for example, why would a person put the table and not spend that extra half second just to like slide it out? Because it really, it, it's it's a really like it takes you out of immersion when you see stuff like that. The goddamn savage bit me. He's lost almost all real cognitive function, leaving only anger. <laughs> only <laughs> anger. And punitive measure. I stapled his mouth shut. Oh, stable his mouth shut. Um, so I'm guessing he's doing experiments. Um, but yeah, there's a lot of reasons for why people, they uh, neglect stuff like that. It can just be that they, they just haven't reached a place of maturity yet in their heads where they... And I'm not saying that to make like tell people that they're childish or anything. But, you know, you reach a point when you grow up or later in your adulthood, like with me, um, where you don't really reflect a lot on stuff that you're doing. So if you're making a website or if you're making a game, um, which button? Oh, there we go, okay. Um, you don't reflect a lot on what you're doing. Okay, so why for fast flashlight? And there is not infinite flashlight. Oh, I didn't even need to use it. Okay, we have audio playing. Why did we need the flashlight again? Is there anything here? <laughs> oh my god. Did they try to make a... Um... Oh! Oh! He's coming for me! Run! <laughs> Run! <laughs> oh, he's right behind me! Oh, go. This is so bad. This is so bad on the Switch. Uh. <laughs> Continue? Wait. Oh, it says main menu. I can't select it. I, I guess it's just like to indicate this is a main menu. Which, by the way, um, the, the only reason that continue is red is because it's the only... Th like, I have it selected because it's the only thing I can select. Main menu should be different, like more bold or something for me to like know that that's not something I can select to go back to the main menu. Uh, so that is some more feedback there. Um, I'm not too sure what we're supposed to do. Am I supposed to run back down the hallway? If you're telling me he's over there... Did he not spawn in the same place? Oh, he did not. Okay, so that's a feedback as well. Uh, I was expecting him to be spawned in in the same place. I expected him to come out from that uh, door. Is he back here? Okay, so that's kind of weird. So when you die, the enemy doesn't reset. I mean, it could be a feature. Who knows? But it just kind of seems like... You know, it's something you don't typically see in games. Okay. Uh, also, when you run away from him, he will at some point catch up to you. Like, if you notice that I, I kept sprinting and there was moments where I took my time to turn, you know. But when I was actually sprinting in a straight line away from him, he still caught more up to me. Uh, which means that he would have caught me at some point. 
So you're supposed to hide from him. And if he actually sees you, then it's just over. Like you're you're going to get caught <laughs> at some point. Unless you find a, a, a door you can load into. Okay, so we have a little bit of stuff here with the... Um, there's also something else you can do if you go into the settings in your... Oh, can I interact with it? If you go into this... I could. We have combat? Drop your weapon with L? I'm not gonna drop it. Just take that button away. <laughs> uh, okay. Oh! Toggle the radio. The radio plays a continuous audio feedback of your surroundings, emitting static when an anomaly is nearby. Oh, that's not from my radio, that's from those. The siren indicates an anomaly is nearby. This is just a big outdoor area. What is over here? Oh, we can block. Ah. What's going on with the music? Run. <laughs> Run. <laughs> no, did I, I dropped it. No! Give it back. <laughs> Where is it? <laughs> oh, wait, I have a flashlight. There we go. <laughs> I for totally forgot about the flashlight. Okay. Uh, run this way. <laughs> that L button is dangerous. Is it because you can only have one item at a time? Is there something over there? There's some lights over there in the distance. Okay, there's more lights, so I'm... You know what? I'll actually give this game credit uh, for having a pretty good open area. I thought this was just going to lead me out to like a, a wall or something where now I couldn't get any further. And now I'm realizing that I just did reach a wall where I can't get any further. Um, is there anything down here? Oh, there is something down here. Okay. I was about to say, this is... Heading this far out during an alarm is extremely dangerous. It oh, it keeps attacking me. I am dead. <laughs> uh, okay. Um, let's give it one more go. Let's give it one more go. I'm not entirely sure what I'm supposed to be doing. <gasps> Where's the axe? No! The axe is over there. Keep in mind, this is a full release. And it just kind of seems like when you have something in your inventory, like a weapon, even though it's droppable, should respawn back. What is that? That seems like a pretty big oversight. The thing I think is, is like the, the, like the biggest mistake of these games. Okay, I... Whoa, what? Okay, I got turned around. The thing I think is like the biggest... Well, not really biggest mistake, but you know, it's like too bad about these games because you can tell effort was put into it. I think a lot of these things are downloaded acids. Or at least like, you know, very basic models. But I think it's too bad to, to create an entire game and then neglect basic stuff like this. Oh, we can toggle it. So is there a limit to sprint? I think with these... What? Oh! Oh! Oh no! Oh no! <laughs> oh, there's a tree! Run! Look back! <laughs> it's chasing me! <laughs> How do I get away from it? Okay, I, I am running away from it. It is... Uh, it is getting further away. I 
I think the look back feature is actually pretty good. Um, the only thing I think is kind of weird. Oh, he's still there. The only thing I think is kind of weird is that you can actually see it fades to black when I look back. So it like, I don't know, it, it doesn't turn me around. It actually fades to black and, and fades me in again. <laughs> Let's jump to the next game. So this one is called Connection Haunted. Now, again, just like with the other one, I have absolutely no idea what this game is about. Uh, we can change languages and I can press X to join the lobby. Oh, there's some info here if I press B. So there was quite a few people working on this game. QA lead, chief sales officer, team leader, marketing and PR manager, managing director, chairman of the board. There's another chairman of the board, porting programmer, Junior porting programmer, graphic designer, port... You have two porting programmers, which means that you had two programmers that had to port this game to the Switch because it was made for another platform and they had to make it work with the Switch. And then you have a junior porting programmer. So you have three programmers. And then you have all these people here. I mean, I can understand having a managing director, marketing and PR manager, That's that makes sense as well. Because when you have to create a game, you have to spend a lot of time marketing it. So that is a full-time job. But then I don't understand. Why do you have a team leader and a managing director? I mean, I know these are different, but what I'm trying to like wrap my head around is that you have a tiny indie game and then you have all these people doing jobs and they have all these fancy titles when they actually seem like they could like multitask a little bit here. When you're in the illusion that you're making a larger game that requires a chairman of the board, actually two chairmen of the board, a managing director, a marketing and PR manager, a team leader, a chief sales officer, a QA lead, then you're in the delusion that you think you're in a place where you're competing with the AAA industry. I don't know, maybe this is something that bothers me more than it really should, but I just think that it's so... Oh, I just think it's so weird that... There's so many people involved and so few people in the process. There's literally four people developing the game. Four people. One graphic designer, two main programmers, and a junior porting programmer. The rest of these guys are doing PR stuff. They're managing their team. It's like, like this is the kind of team you would have set up for your game if you had like 10 programmers that you needed to manage. Then you would need a team leader to manage all the programmers. But when you have three programmers, they, they just talk internally. <laughs> okay, let's uh, let's jump on. Um, see what the game is actually about. It says X to join lobby. I'm actually not too sure. I'm not really like, I don't know what I'm looking at. Can I just choose the, the top one? Okay. Like, I don't know what I just selected. I guess a level. Joining server. Is this an online game? Uh, online game. Zero out of three enemy flags captured. How many bullets do I have? Oh, okay, it's up there. Uh, I do want to say the uh, the programmers have done a good job of making the controls. Considering this is a shooter, like the previous game was horrendous when it came to like movement and stuff like that. This one is much more smooth. Much more smooth. Um, did I just like purchase a seven kroner multiplayer game? So there's no single player mode for this game. There's just basic multiplayer. And I mean, if you look at the graphics, this is not something that... Actually, no, I take that back. They had one graphic person on the team. And this is, you know, for one person, this is what I would expect for one person if they had a long time to, to work on a game. So, you know, I think this is pretty, pretty much what's expected of a one-person graphic designer. Um, three programmers... Three. I'm just trying to like understand how much programming goes into this. There's of course setting up the servers because this is apparently an online game uh, with no one playing it. Uh, 
I I don't really understand. Okay, let let let's try and 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 brainstorm what is actually here in terms of like game. You have a level that the graphic designer made. Oh, that's the flag. Is this like some sort of intricate thing where so player U has joined the server press this one to drop a glow stick you have 15 no it, it keeps saying I have 15 <laughs> is this really a multiplayer game or is this like one of those where oh player X has joined and then it's actually like a computer that has joined in I don't know I, I'm trying to wrap my head around if this is like an actual online player game really the only thing like the junior programmer could create the the controls for this and the picking up flag mechanic and i don't really like i'm it <laughs> i'm speechless it it's uh, it only requires one programmer to make this it does you don't need three programmers to make this and you don't need that huge marketing team and PR and all that stuff for this thing to be honest I think that one person could have handled the PR and the marketing and everything while these guys were were making this game because it's not something you would set up for for this it's, it's such a tiny game I don't know, I have the flag and I'm, I want to turn it in somewhere. <laughs> oh! So the spawn location isn't where I need to, to turn it in. I have hiccups. Okay, so let's, uh, let's head this way. Because this is clearly the uh, direction. Okay, let's drop a glow stick. I'm sitting here, the only reason I'm still playing I'm expecting there to be some sort of twist where I find out that I'm in an empty lobby to start with and then something spawns in. You know, it's not it's not actually a multiplayer game. It's just like it's trying to give you the illusion that it is. Uh, but it's actually like this uh, intricate thing. And I have infinite glow sticks, I'm pretty sure. Okay, I think I... Oh, oh! Actually, you just saw it spawned in. All right, there's the culling distance that I was talking about. The the boxes they spawn in. Um, why is there static happening? What? Okay, so there's like commands. You can hide the player join player one lobby wait so I don't understand if this is a multiplayer game why can I only select one lobby zero out of 30 what <laughs> what am I doing zero out of 30 of and notice that there's only one gun with six bullets there's no other guns in the game there's one gun with six bullets is this a shooter multiplayer game or what is this? Okay, um, so we're here. Oh, there's a red dot on the map. So let's go for it. It's not moving. Only when I move does it move. I don't know why I'm still playing this. Yeah, that's the flag. Okay, so we get the flag. Now what? Oh, this is a completely different subway system. There's a blue thing over here on the map. If the minimap was that important, they should have an indicator telling you. Are the, the, the flag points really that close to each other? I feel like I'm like going super far away. Can I sprint? Oh, we can! Okay. <laughs> Run! Uh, there we go. Okay. Let's, let's capture it three times. I want to see what happens once we capture three. This can't be it. 
Like, I'm so baffled if this is it. What? Has joined the server. Two out of 30 players online. What? There's a person here. Okay, now I'm starting to get interesting. Is that an actual person or is that a... He's over there. I see him. Do you see him? He's right there. Oh my god. Chills. <laughs> Wait, okay, so... With everything I've said... I, th I still stick to what I said if this is in fact just a multiplayer game but if this is like oh he disappeared okay this is more interesting now I'm actually getting into this game now. Okay, it's it's fine. And I still have like infinite glow sticks. <laughs> I'm pretty sure. <laughs> okay, I may have like screwed up something here, directional wise. Uh, let's go this way. Jump scare. This is actually terrifying. Like, I was expecting this game to just, like, I was ready to close down this game and play something else. Because I thought, another player online, there's three players now. And it glitched out. Oh. Oh, they're writing in the chat. I knew something was off. I knew it didn't make sense that we only had these amount of bullets. Like six bullets for a shooter with no other, no other guns in here. Didn't make sense. What? Ooh! Okay, it's dead. <laughs> um, let's go back. Okay, yeah, the, the reason this is terrifying is because it is emulating a real person playing with me in here when there's not really a real person playing with me in here. Um, it's the idea that there's sitting someone else playing this game with you when it's such a lonely game. What is that? Oh, go away from me. Can I interact with it? Okay, I think I'm shooting the other players. I think that's what I'm doing now. I am noticing a little bit of performance hit in some places. Um, <laughs> I'm not a Counter-Strike player. I didn't shoot it in time. Because Counter-Strike players, they are fast. Ooh. I think some of the doors are opening up and closing as I'm progressing. I saw the flag. I saw the flag. This is like complete darkness. See you. Oh my god. Player 2 has joined? What? Wait, so there's a... Who are you? He says. 
Can I write? <laughs> oh, I can reload. We have infinite bullets. This shouldn't be. Okay. Ooh, okay, he's glitching out. Okay, shooting you. Each second passing, the curse is growing stronger. I have no more uh, lights. <laughs> uh, crouch for a sec if you understand my words. I am crouching. Um, you understand me then? Uh, listen, he says. How am I supposed to get out? There are things humans can't understand. People end up vanishing. Used command, show me. What? Meet me, I'm on the map. Okay, let's go then. Please. <laughs> I have to sneeze. <laughs> Okay, let's go to him. He's on the map. Oh, he just shot someone. Yeah, we have no more lights that we can use. I thought I had infinite. It didn't count down. <laughs> I just used them all in like random places. Like there's one right there. Um, they're not really that scary, the monsters, but I, I think the concept of the game is, is super scary. Okay, so it should be like right here. Loading. Wait, what? Oh, there he is. Can't go that way. Where? <laughs> At least I'm glad the uh, controls are pretty responsive. The thing I think is super funny about this is that even with this happening, you don't need that big of a team making this game. Three, two, one. <laughs> so my recorder decided to stop recording, uh, which is apparently a known issue when it comes to the El Gato game capture software. So instead I will be using Streamlabs to record, which is what I usually use when I record on my on my PC. So so you missed out on the on the last, I think the last five minutes of the previous game that I just played, which was the one where we ran around and we were playing against AIs, which tried to look like or simulate other players, which was kind of cool. So I actually think the game was, was kind of good once we got past the, um, I don't know, I just felt really weird about them having this huge team working on the game when I, I really feel like it would be a game that you would typically see one, two people work on. You know, one person to program the whole thing and one person to design it. And I, I don't, I don't know, I'm, I'm just a little bit flabbergasted to see that there's so many uh, people <laughs> working unnecessarily uh, on this game project that we just played. Um, so yeah, I, I think we're just gonna continue from there. I think it was a pretty good game once we got past that point. I finished the first level, which by the way, just stopped all of a sudden once I caught up to the other player an X amount of times. It just stopped and took me back out to the main menu and then I had to pick level two or any of the other levels because I had a free pick from, from all the other levels then. If you want to continue seeing more of that particular game, you're more than welcome to tell me in the comments. If not, then I will just leave it. Um, next game. Okay, so this next one is called... Coloro, <laughs> had to double check. We're jumping into the world of 2D gaming now. Uh, we have done plenty of 3D and we'll be doing 2D. And I actually have three games that we're going to be just sort of playing. Uh, one of them I downloaded yesterday. Um, I don't know if you realize this, but this is actually much later, many days after um, those other two games that we just played because I took a long break of recording this particular video in between uh, after the, the crash thing. Um, <laughs> so we're going to be playing three 2D games because I really feel like most people when they dive into indie game development, they, they start out in 2D. 
2D game development is considered to be more difficult than 3D for some reason. Um, I didn't quite believe it until I started d delving more into 3D because to be honest, I've mostly done 2D stuff in Unity and then I tried 3D and it was actually quite easier. Now, Start the Dream is a very beautiful looking 2D game from what I can tell. Um, I did actually start this up and try it out. Um, so, you know, uh, I think... Can I start at level 1? There we go, I'm ready. <laughs> can I start at level 1 or does it just like... Uh, wait. Uh, oh, yeah, we can. Okay, so this is how many levels I played. Like I said, it crashed and I actually played this game and then it crashed. Um, and I didn't realize after I was done recording this entire video. So so we're, we're starting over. <laughs> I know what these next three games are like. Um, but I just wanted to show off a couple, a couple of things. This, by the way, is a very flushed out 2D game. Um, it has cinematics. It has very beautifully made UI. Uh, you can definitely tell the, the people who made this game know what they did, aesthetically. Um, Koro Wake Up. Yeah, they definitely knew what they were making. Uh, it looks beautiful. I, I love the fact that it's the same vector art style that I usually create my games with. I'm Boo, your imaginary friend. Imaginary friend? Huh. Yes, Koro, the power of imagination is strong. Now we should look for your sister. Find all crystals and open new worlds. I'll give you the right form. Try use my power, or try to use. Now forget everything you know, you'll uh, only be able to move, jump, change direction by pressing A. Yeah, I, okay, so we're just gonna skip, cause basically you press A, and then you turn into this cube, and you can only jump. So if I'm running up against a wall and I press jump, it changes direction. Basically, I can't change direction by myself, uh, which is kind of the, the whole mechanic of this 2D game. So I can do this and then jump up. Um, I love that it's based on graphics that I usually make my 2D games in. Uh, I might I might put something on the screen here so you can see, um, which is something I've been working on for a little while. And there we go. <laughs> When it comes to 2D games like this, one thing that you really need to focus on is the user experience while playing, because a lot of times when you see 2D games, um, you have no idea how much work goes into making the player controller feel just the right way. Because you can't do a lot with 2D games. It's, it's horizontal and vertical movement. There's no 3D. Uh, the visual styles are also very different from what you can do with 3D games, so you have to make sure that not only your player feels exactly like it needs to when it comes to 2D games, but you also need to make sure that when it comes to the visual style, that the visual style feels... How do you explain that? When you look at a 2D game, you need to get a vibe of how the controls are supposed to feel like. Does that make sense? Um, and I definitely feel like these guys, they nailed it. It looks beautiful, uh, it has, you know, Particles, it has light, it has vector art style, um, it's responsive. I definitely feel like I'm not being fought against with the controls. Like the controls, they respond to what I want them to do, which is super important. Like when you, when you start making games in Unity, this is really something that you'll be able to make fairly fast. It's not complicated. If you know how to, like, it's just very basic level layouts. It is fairly simple but then again you can very quickly make something like this and crap it out but you can tell these developers they spent a lot of time polishing at the end like it doesn't feel like a rushed game which is really the big difference when i play these indie games and i often tell you guys oh but it feels you know like they just crapped it out um you can you can make pt clones and i don't feel like they're crapped out if they're polished if they if they feel right um, there's a very big difference there. If it feels polished, and it feels responsive, and it feels new, then it's a good game. Uh, and I definitely feel like this game has nailed it. I mean, just look at the, the menus. I, th I think they look wonderful. It has a loading icon. It kind of feels a bit like playing um, Ori and the Blind Forest, if you know that game. It's a very awesome 2D game if anyone want to 
try it out. Anytime that I need to draw inspiration from doing anything 2D control wise, I always play Ori in the Blind Forest and I'm like, I want it, I want it to feel that way. Um, <laughs> uh, with that said, this is basically the game. You go through levels, it's a puzzle game, it plays well, I think it's very well done. Uh, so let's jump to the next one. Now this game is called Mana Sparks. And I have some feedback, which I think is very important to point out for anyone who wants to make 2D games to take note of, because this is a game that... Okay, I'll just briefly explain what is going on here, because I, like I said, I've seen this, my screen recorder crashed, I played these two games. Uh, basically, it has really good cinematics here. Um, it looks like this, it's very good drawn well drawn it's it's well drawn um basically it's a world where whoever has magic has power um and humankind is enslaved by magical beings who does have mana uh with that said oh ah, i wanted to show the menu okay well the menu was pretty responsive and felt great is what i wanted to say um can i restart i would love to restart yeah, so I, I just in general feel like the menu is very well made. I'm, I'm a little bit sad about the black box behind the whole thing because it feels a bit weird. It was kind of like put there to to highlight the menu. I think we should just make the menu, I don't know, eggshell colored on top of the, the background and then maybe the selected item should be pink. I feel like the black box kind of ruins it a little bit. Uh, like here, this is actually good. Why not just do this? Well, I guess it's because you have a black filter on top of the background so i don't think it can restart there's no restart feature an important point to to point out so whenever you make a 2d game one of the most crucial things after the visual style and controls like these are like there's like three pillars to making a really good 2d games Make sure you have a beautiful looking game because 2D relies on having a beautiful looking game because there's no three dimensions. You also need to make sure the character controls feels exactly like they're supposed to. They need to be responsive and they need to fit the feeling of the game. The third thing, which this game has nothing of, which is really one of the core pillars to making a 2D game, is tactile feedback or snappiness, you could call it. Uh, basically, Look at how the character is just completely centered on the screen at all times. It feels very weird that the character is not walking a bit and then the camera tries to follow. It's very fit directly onto the player. The aim thing also just kind of feels a little bit like a little robotic, not as fluid and, and organic as I would love it to be. It's a very beautiful looking game. How do we get back? I think we just go this way. Um, if you get into combat, you'll also notice that when I start shooting, everything just feels so bland. It doesn't feel snappy. Um, like, I really feel like this game kind of screwed itself over because it didn't bring any snappiness to it. When you fire the bullets, nothing happens. You just kind of stand there, which I think is a bit sad. Or is A? <laughs> I don't play a lot of Switch. <laughs> well, I do, but I, I never bothered to learn anything other than PlayStation controls. Yet, yeah, there's just no snappiness to it at all. Uh, you, you really feel like... It's super bland. Uh, which is definitely not how it's supposed to feel like, I'm pretty sure. Um, so the developer, you know, spent all this time making a beautiful looking pixel art game which by the way it's also fun to see that this is pixel art versus the other game we played which is vector art so it kind of gives you an idea about if you want to make one thing over the other yeah uh, that, that's really my biggest criticism for this game is that it is super bland to look at there's no screen shake when you fire the bullet or when you get hit there's no screen shakes i'm pretty sure i might just be saying stuff now that i haven't actually tested let's actually test it okay so if we walk down here Let's try and get hit. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> the difficulty spike might be a little bit too low. Uh, I don't think there's a difficulty setting. Maybe it's because it's too early in the game. He hit me. Okay, there's a bit of, of screen shake. There's a bit of shake in the controls. So I was speaking too fast when it came to that. Um, 
that right there, the screen shake, that kind of thing versus this right here. I mean, it, it really puts you out of the mood. It makes you feel like the difference between picking up a game and then not being able to put it back down versus playing a game and then just kind of feel like, eh, it's really the the tactile feedback, the the you know the the snappiness of the game. It's it's I think that's the word that Thomas Brush uses. Uh, Thomas Brush is another YouTuber who does uh, indie game devs stuff. Really amazing to to watch. I have his game on my Switch as well, but I'll make that into a separate video at some point. Um, yeah, I don't know. It, it it just I just really feel that indie games that are based on two D. Or like, you know, a course where you have the potatoes, you have the meat, and then you have the sauce that needs to be put on top. I really feel like the sauce is missing from this game. Uh, it's just a very bland, like you have the course there, you have the meal there, you have the potatoes, you have the meat, you have a full meal, technically. Um, but the sauce is what makes it just like feel really good to eat. And I, I just can't get this out of my head that the camera is just like completely fixed on top of the player. It just doesn't feel good. If they, if I don't know if they had players testing this game uh, besides themselves, because that is a mistake that some developers do as well. They don't have other people outside their little game dev group test their games. And if they do that sometimes, they may have family members test out their games, which means they're not completely honest uh, because they don't want to hurt their feelings. But if they had me play test this game, or I feel any other person who plays a lot of 2D games, they would definitely just have like this little flag in their head saying there's something off here. There's something that doesn't quite feel like, you know, this game could be a third times better if it just had this one thing. And that's definitely the, the snappiness of the game. Either way, next game. Now, this next one here is called Night Lights, I believe. I'm, I may be wrong. Let, let's see once we get the uh, <laughs> the intro. The reason I wanted to show this game because I oh Maiden with Unity, so it's a Unity game. Um, the reason I didn't want to show this game originally was first of all because I didn't have it back when I my screen recorder crashed. I love the visual style of this game so much, but. I'll show you a couple of issues once we get started on it. Uh, will you reset your progress? Yes. Um, so this is new game. And I love how when you press new game, it just like removes the, the menu and then you're back into the game because uh, this is where you start out. So this is one of those type of games where it's a very slow moving game. It's a puzzle game, by the way. This is a game that has a lot of flaws when it comes to how the character moves and interacts with things and I think that the way they solve some of the puzzles in the game itself is by relying on those character controller flaws which might not make a lot of sense but I'll try and play it a little bit for you to see. Uh, the basic premise of this game is that I believe a comet or something hits somewhere out there and you have to go find it. Um, so he's like, you know, looking through his telescope and he sees it. There's, there's a really good intro with like an animated character and everything. So if I use this light here, the light basically allow for different things. So right now I can't go down because there's a wall blocking. But if I shine a light on it, it removes the wall. And that's the basic puzzle mechanic of this game. One of the issues with this game is that you can get around certain puzzles by bucking it. And you can do that every third puzzle, <laughs> basically. <laughs> and you get it gets to a point where you don't know, is it a feature or is it like a bug? <laughs> when you walk upstairs, right? Look at this. I, I couldn't jump. Now I could jump. Okay. Now I can jump. Okay. Now I can jump. So I, I should be allowed to like jumping on stairs, uh, ladders is a thing, right? Oh, I can't jump here. Oh, now I can jump up there. And I kind of thought to myself, what exactly is going on here? Like, what, what is going on in the code for this to happen? Because my th first thought was that the um, there would be some kind of, you know, a trigger collider on top of the player, you know, like a tiny box underneath his feet that would be a certain distance from the ground. And if he is grounded, then you can jump. And if you go a little bit up the stairs, then the collider is so long that it may still be touching the ground. That was my first thought. But that's not the case because it's not always that you can jump when you're just up on the stairs. Sometimes you can jump all the way up here like like that. 
and other times it just doesn't let you. Like, I'm completely convinced now that I'm supposed to be able to jump on the stairs. But I'm not supposed to. <laughs> I'm See, it didn't jump there. And it has nothing to do with how long I'm holding down the jump button, because I've tested it thoroughly. I spent 30 minutes on this starting staircase trying to figure out what was going wrong here um, when I initially played this game. I don't know, it's just super weird. Um, so my thought was, okay, that must mean that I have to jump over and reach the box. Because you can do it. If you, if you time it right, you can do it. So I spent... Oh, see, now he didn't jump. Now he didn't jump. Now he jumped. <laughs> um, I did actually manage to just jump up there, grab the box, push it down onto the platform which is here to activate the teleporter to get out of this level here, right? Um, which is apparently not how you're supposed to do it. You're supposed to use this thing here um, in order to like turn it off and now I can get on top of the platform without jumping. When you make something that is that obvious that, oh, so I can jump on ladders to get up there. Um, that must be what I'm like have to do, right? It kind of like tricks you into thinking there are mechanics that are not there, like possibilities that you can do that are not there. And it's one of those things where, I don't know, it just kind of, it, it gives a bad user experience and it, it makes you feel like a fool. It makes you feel a little bit like you got tricked into like spending 30 minutes trying to jump from the ladder to the platform because only half the time does it actually let you jump. Um, <laughs> so it, it just kind of, it feels bad when the player controller has not been set up correctly. This is actually a really good example because this game here, it does have a somewhat decent, I mean, there's not much snappiness you can put to a game that is this slow moving, um, but it does have a, you know, a, a, it feels good to play. It looks amazing, but the player controller is off here. That's the mistake this game has. And again, like I said, there's three core pillars, at least when, when I have to think of three core pillars. Um, I also spent quite a bit of time trying to jump outside the map, because as you can see here, oh, I can almost make it. And I was like, okay, so, hmm. What about this side? And then I felt really bad, because you can actually get stuck behind here. Um, and I realized that, one second, oh, there's an invisible wall we can't get past. So, you know, they have set up a level, a level design where I can actually jump outside the tree if I really try, but they block it off with an invisible wall. And in my mind, when you make a level design, it sh should not be possible to even get to a point where I can jump outside the tree. And you know, I, I, I hear some people argumenting, saying, well, Daniel, you're just supposed to like enjoy the game. You're not supposed to try and break it constantly. But this series here is really for me to try and break games and game test and find bugs and, you know, try and give feedback on games, what should be fixed, that type of thing. Bear in mind, this is full release games that I've been playing today. Um, and long time ago, you know, when I recorded the first two games, like these are full releases. These are not, these are not indie games. Like, um, well, it is indie games. Um, it's not, you know, game jam games. It's not something that was made in three days, you know. Did they use a physics-based movement here? I see a little bit of jittering with the background. I don't, th I don't think that's actually on the Switch. I think that might be my screen recorder, actually. Uh, I'm pretty sure that I look for this on the Switch when I was sitting with it in my hand on the original screen. And the trees in the background did not jitter this much. So, um, yeah, so here's another mechanic. You spin the wheel. It reveals the ladder. And now for some reason, I'm supposed to be able to jump over and catch that thing. But the jump mechanic doesn't work half the time. <laughs> I'm pretty sure I'm supposed to get it some other way. I, I think I'm supposed to jump down here and then catch it on the way down or something because the jump mechanic, it fails so often that I'm 80% sure it's not supposed to be a mechanic. Uh, so we turn on the light down there. 
am I supposed to see? I can't even reach that thing. Um, at some point, you get a sprint button, but you have to unlock it, and then you can like jump to the to the left over to that platform over there. Uh, right now, we can just walk. By the way, he's still walking in the air when he jumps. I really feel like the there should be like a I don't know a jump animation and not just like him continuously walking with the same animation. Uh, so now I can put that in there. So clearly I'm supposed to jump out to get it, right? Let me just move this thing. Oh, it takes us up. I, I really feel like this is quite nice. I feel like the, um, the use of uh, masking here in order to, you know, reveal the ground and it kind of like acts as an elevator to get it up there. I, I feel like that's quite nice. I don't know. I like this game for some reason. I, I think it's the visual style and just the overall feel of the game. But I really hate the player controller. Like the the, the car honking outside. I, I, I it kind of feels like this is a person who has a very strong talent when it comes to like visual style and uh, making a beautiful looking game, like a graphic designer maybe who then attempted to code their own game. Which kudos for doing that, because you know. It, it, Coding may not be this person's strong point. I don't know. I don't feel like it's that hard to to fix those little bugs with the player controller. Like now I can jump. Now I can jump. Now I can jump. Now I couldn't jump. <laughs> the fun thing is that right now as I'm recording this, I'm actually jumping 80% of the time. A any other time I played this game, which is like three other times, I was able to jump maybe like 15% of the time. I don't know why all of a sudden, now that I'm recording it, I'm jumping constantly. I swear, every single other time I played this game, the jumping felt like it was a bug of some sort. Um, <laughs> uh, can I reach up here? Come on, come on. I know what I'm supposed to do. Ah, it's so close. Okay, I'm supposed to like do this, then move this over here. And then the light gets turned on. Oh my god! And we can move past. Um, yeah, the first game of the 2D games was definitely my... Uh, the most polished one. Not my most favorite one. I think this is maybe my most favorite one of the three. <laughs> but it could really be improved by, by actually being polished enough with the player controls for me to know what I'm supposed to be able to do in the game when it comes to like the jumping mechanic on stairs for example. There has also been moments in this game where I could actually buck out by jumping up against a wall and then oh continue jumping up and then I could actually reach somewhere where I was not supposed to reach yet. There has been moments where I push down objects like this one right here. Uh, this is an object you can push, this is a light right? I would push it down from somewhere and the use into the little pop-up that says use with Y, if I push it down somewhere and it lands on its head, the use will be flipped upside down underneath the actual object. Um, and in some cases, if I flip some of the objects over, they won't work on, on elevators, which you see later in the game. Um, and then what do you do? Because now I'm stuck. The object I'm supposed to use is flipped and I can't flip it over again. And I can't put it on the elevator now because it's flipped. So I tried to exit the game and load back in. Actually, I tried to teleport out and then back again. And then the object, for some reason, I was supposed to use the elevator to get the object out from where I was supposed to and get it over to where I, was, I, I had to use it. And for some reason, by loading and teleporting out of here and then back in again, the object automatically teleported to where I needed to use it. So it basically said, oh, the object is bugged, I'll just place it where he needs to use it. And that whole puzzle just got completely skipped and I, I, I couldn't do it. I don't know, it, it gets to a point where it's kind of cute that there's so many creative ways they try to get around the bugs. <laughs> uh, but either way, these are five random indie game full releases on the Switch that I played and gave my feedback on. Hopefully it gives you guys, if you're sitting there and actually working on a game, some uh, insight into what to look out for. Again, like I said, a good visual style, like this right here is, is beautifully made. Uh, good player controls, which this game does not have. And of course, you also need to make sure it's snappy. Um, I don't know if you can call this one snappy, but it definitely... 
I don't know, it's just so slow paced. You can't make this very snappy. Maybe when like an optic falls down and you have to push it off somewhere, because I can actually do it. Let me show you. I need to turn it off, otherwise the elevator disappears. I remember this puzzle. So I'll put it up here, I'll push it off. Maybe I can actually flip it over to show the interface thing. Yeah, okay, here we go. See? It's on the side. <laughs> Uh, yeah, but like I would love for it when it lands on the ground to give a small camera shake as like a big object like boosh, hitting the ground and the, the, the screen does a little camera shake or something. Uh, but it, it just feels very uh, anticlimactic when it hits the ground. It's just like it's feels like it's it's a pillow that's hitting the ground when it's like a heavy, heavy lantern. Right. Um, and that's what I mean by snappiness. So yeah, I hope you got something out of this. I can keep talking forever. Um, I hope you enjoyed this video. And let me know if there is, uh, you know, anything specific you want me to to try out and give my feedback on. Because, you know, I'm, I'm coming up with a lot of stuff myself. And I don't mind doing that. But if you guys have any suggestions to something, you're more than welcome to suggest it. And I can take a look at it. Uh, even if you have some games that you want me to give feedback on. Just know that... I will try my best to be completely objective and not sugarcoat things because I will tell you if there's something wrong. This is an odd choice. So the little uh, bump on the log actually allow for my character to run into it. Can I actually jump off of one of them? I don't think I can. <laughs> Either way, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you guys next time.